guys, welcome to Be Monthly Live. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Bartlesville. I am Keith McPhail, sitting with my beautiful wife, Christy. We want to welcome you guys to Be Monthly Live. Coming to you live today with uh, in our beautiful offices here at Price Tower, and uh, we have a great show for you guys today. Um, first of all, how are you? Good, thank you. You're good. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. Well, we're always excited. We always do this show because we want to premiere the, the issue that's coming out, and this issue in October, um, kind of a different tone we took with this issue than last year. Um, and one of the things that we did for this year is we really wanted to focus on cemeteries. And if you think about cemeteries, I love history, as everybody knows. So cemeteries to me, they're just, they're beautiful. And uh, so we, uh, our feature this month is on cemeteries, the history of cemeteries, who's buried out there, some famous people. We talk a little bit, a little bit about Frank Phillips's mausoleum, which ironically has a phone in it and also air conditioner just in case so um, here's the cover so our October cover is the Lavity Mansion which is kind of uh, a little north of Copan um, and it's a beautiful structure me and Chance Franks went out there and took some shots we spent about five and a half hours out there we got lost um, back in the 80s that was a place to go um, to drink a lot of beer and so uh, Christy never experienced that but uh, but I did so so me and Chance went out there and took some of these shots out there and uh, we wanted to get kind of a little spooky feel but the building itself isn't really scary necessarily it's just a great stone structure and so um, Debbie Neese at the History Museum wrote a story, a two-page story about the Labity Mansion, and it's the real story, and she called it the Gingerbread Mansion. So here's a shot that was taken by Blake Goodwin, uh, which is a beautiful shot, and we had, we had the rights to use that for a cover, but I really wanted to get our own cover. That's what I love to do about our covers, and so uh, I think it turned out great, and we call it Hallowed Night. So, Anyway, we, uh, we're excited about this issue. We've got a lot of good stuff in here. Uh, our, on our show tonight, we have Alan Ginches. I want to make sure that's right because it's a, a, it's a great name, but I, a name that I can't say. And so he's here. Also, we have uh, uh, Aaron Sparks with us today. He's going to be singing a song that he wrote for Officer Fouts, who I really want to say something real quick about that. We went out to... Um, last Saturday at Sal's Donuts to help raise some money for the family, for the Fouts family. And we raised over $5,000. We went live out there and we we, um, we raised some money and that was the Sal whole did a point. great job making yes. all the donuts. He sold sure. over 2,000 donuts. So, and I did have some donuts that day. So um, anyway, um, that next morning, early morning, um, Officer Fouts passed away. And so we, uh, we just want to say we're still praying for the family. We just left you guys up in prayer. And so, uh, um, anyway, we, uh, um, Aaron wrote a great song for him. He's going to sing it today. And I think it's going to move a lot of people. It moves me. So, um, so what was your, uh, what was your favorite story in the magazine? I had, we just uh, got them yesterday. Yeah. I, the, of course we've seen them. Yes. A lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in November right now in my brain, but, I really like, there's an interesting story that Kay Little wrote about mourning and the different mm -hmm. ways people mourned and things that, um, you know, used to be like a tradition, you think of all black, that's not always the case, and then things that people made with hair of the people that had passed away, and there's some things at the History Museum that would be interesting to go and look through and find out more about um, different kinds of caskets and things mm -hmm. like that which all sounds very morbid but it's really not it's fascinating and I like that a lot I also liked um, our good word that was good yes. and talks about hope and yes. things that are that are brighter and so Jason Elmore mm -hmm. so that was really good that. I didn't enjoy that but 
Um, and our, our buddies, three guys in the Ville, mm -hmm. who are going to be on the show. Yep, so, we'll see uh, them a little later, and they will not be sad or <laughs> morbid or boring at all. No. So that'll be fun to stay tuned and watch them. And it's great seeing what those guys have been doing with their mm -hmm. show and how it's taken off and really got popular, and, and uh, we just want to support them. So uh, I've got my notes today, so I uh, just want to make sure we talk about a little things here. Uh, of course, we talked about the cover. You know, one of the interesting things about the uh, uh, Labby Mansion is some people say no one ever lived in it, but they actually did live in it but for a very, very short time. Um, it's a fascinating story and uh, now sits on the, um, I just went blank. I don't know what you're thinking. The ranch. I'm to say, oh. Oh, the Mullendore Ranch. Thank yes. you. Uh, <laughs> it sits on the Mullendore Ranch. So now, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's just a beautiful a beautiful thing um, uh, house out there. So anyway, um, so everything going good. So for October, I I gotta say off the cuff. I always have to say something off the cuff. And so for us, um, I wrote a pretty moving upfront um, for this issue, and I talk about Tyler. I talk about the uh, the day that we we lost Tyler, um, October eighth. 2009 so we're coming up on nine years and so uh, with Christie's permission and her blessing I wrote a, a, a great up front that we that I talked about Tyler and, and what his uh, what his passing has meant to us and our family and and uh, look I'm telling you I, I married the strongest woman in the world I tell him that's not true I know his mother well and so I beg to differ but thank you and he did you read the upfront to me uh, one day before we went to print, I think, because it's one of those that he kept saying, I'm going to write about this, and I was like, no, no, you're not. But um, he read it to me, and it was very mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. There a lot of, he cried, which made me, you know, of yeah. course, tear up. But it's, he's a good writer. He says things, he writes things that I would not ever write down so i think it's it, it's good i hope you guys um yeah you know get something good from it we don't want it to be sad and of course it all happened during homecoming week which is this week this week go bruns it was the night of the parade which was last night so i'm glad the parade's over and that it was good and we're yeah. moving on to the homecoming game but anyway it's always interesting um it's always an interesting week for us but yeah anyway. well you, it's uh, been a hard month, I feel like, for Martinsville. I feel like we've kind of had some rough things, and I yeah. love how the community still pulls together. Mm -hmm. I remember they did that for me as well. And so, you know, it's just good. It, it shows the strength that we have in the community, and um, I appreciate everybody, and I know that we're going to be there for the people that have struggled yes. this last month. So, yes. anyway, so, but thank you for writing that. Yes, Thanks. you're welcome. So, hope you guys enjoy that. So. Uh, couple other things real quick we, we got um, uh, Outpost Coffee is a great story in there that we wrote about that Aunt Jeanette wrote about so that's, those guys are great what they're doing there Rustic Pony um, great little store out there on Highway 75 so that's a good little store to go to and see and so I think for us um, we're just excited about October um, I tell everybody you know in the next 10 days, if you don't get a magazine, you're not going to get one. I mean, we these things just fly off the shelves, and I, I we are so blessed that people take... People love September and all the Western oh. stuff, and still the show here going on, Women Artists of the West, you've got to go see those pieces of art. It's amazing. Yes. You haven't been there yet, so please come see that and buy, buy something. Buy some art, buy some art. So real quick, I'm going to show... Uh, Kind of the feature real quick, this is the feature History is Alive in Area Cemeteries and Mike Wilt wrote this and uh, he really, I mean I, when I told Mike that he's going to be writing about cemeteries, now he's, the joke is so you want me to continue to write about dead people because nobody's ever going to read it. But I think this is fascinating. I think you guys are going to love this feature story. Uh, it's got some great, great pictures in here and ironically if you look at Memorial Park here, this picture, you have No Water Road right here, and then this is Silver Lake, uh, no, this is Sh uh, Swan Drive right here. So it's nice. fascinating, and there's not a house or a tree anywhere to be seen. So great pictures. Thank you for the, for the pictures at the History Museum. And Anton. And Anton, yes. Anton does it. But yeah. Anyway, we had a, a really well, well-known 
uh, photographer moved back to town and offered to take some of these pictures mm -hmm. from us as well, and you'll have to check those out. Too. Okay, so let's uh, let's go over and talk to Alan and see what's going on with the green space. City Councilman, I'm going to say Ward 4. That's correct. And I'm standing in Ward 4. You are standing. This building. So what does that consist of, Ward 4? Ward 4 is essentially everything north of Adams okay. from uh, 75 Highway to the western border. Okay. And then everything between Cherokee and the river from 13th Street north. And there's a little sliver that goes down my side of uh, Shawnee all the way to Hillcrest. Wow. And that's where we live. We live across from the, the old diamond mansion. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay, how long have you been a city councilman? Been a city councilman. Uh, this is my second year. Second year. Great, yeah. great. Well, we want to bring you here because you're really in, sh not well, I'll say in charge, but you really have your, your whole self in this green space. And uh, we're excited because B Monthly is right here at the Price Tower and it's going to be right in our backyard. That's right. And so we are big, big proponent of, uh, supporters of the green space. So I want you to tell us how's it going with the green space, where we're at. I know we're close. I know we had a bunch of art, um, art, artists here, Student. students, students here. Yes. Yep. So tell everybody what's going on. Okay. Well, uh, let me tell you a little history and then I'll tell you where we are today. Um, this idea had uh, popped up probably 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, a group had gotten together and thought about it and uh, when I decided to run, uh, some of the folks who had, had been involved with thinking about possibly putting a green space came to me and I said, yeah, I think we should do that. So starting in January, the, the year I was elected, or the next year actually, um, we uh, started working on this project and uh, there were a lot of folks that couldn't get this done, mm -hmm. you know, this wouldn't be something the city would right. embrace. Um, but we started building support and then we uh, put it in the bond election. Um, it passed overwhelmingly in the bond. It did. And the uh, next process was what we're, the process we're in now, which is a design. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's happened with the design, we put a committee together and I'm co-chair of that committee. Um, uh, various people who are involved in town, civic leaders, uh, folks who are involved in the arts and entertainment mm -hmm. because this is going to be mm -hmm. part of that. And uh, we've been going through that process. And then the students from Taliesin came two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, 13 of them came and they did what they called a de design charrette, which I didn't know what charrette was. I didn't so, either. Good. I'm not the only person. Hey, we, we, we kind of snuck in there uh, and kind of looked over their shoulder when they were doing all this. So uh, we went in there. Oh my gosh. Oh, the energy yes, there is so amazing. Uh, and, and, well, charrette means cart in uh, French. Okay. And it means that you're putting. Everything something, in. Something in the car. Ah. <clears throat> so they had three groups, and if you were there, you saw what they were doing there mm -hmm. in the Lions Gallery in uh, the BCC. Mm -hmm. And uh, after 30 hours or so of them working, and they were there overnight, and they, they'd been here for a couple of days, they came up with three designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, great designs, had great uh, ideas as far as certain kinds of elements that, that are really going to fit mm -hmm. with our, our green as we go forward. Um, and so what we did after that, now we've had a meeting this week in which all of the, uh, the elements that we believe that are going to go into the final design came, were brought together, they, uh, chosen from each one of the design right. groups. Right. And now there will be, uh, there, there is kind of a preliminary, uh, I can't have a preliminary final, but that's what it is, <laughs> a preliminary <laughs> final yeah, design. Yeah, that was that night, or... Was that what it was held that evening? Like that evening that, is when yes. they presented it, yes. Presented, yes. Okay, yeah. And then uh, uh, this Wednesday, in fact, just two days ago, uh, the, the group met again. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we're starting to come to, to an agreement. So when do you think that agreement's going to happen? When do you think you guys are going to say, this is what we're going to do, this is the design we want, this is what we want the city to get behind? The next meeting will be October 17th. Okay. And this is open to the public, so okay. please come. Yes. Okay. We've had a really good uh, yes. response to this. And that's going to be at the? It'll be at the City, city Hall. Okay, okay, City Hall. And Everybody uh, needs to come out for that. We'll make sure that uh, we go whatever big room that we need to, to fill it up as good. many people as there was people. about 70 or so at the meeting before. I don't know how many were there the other night. Uh, I'd say again that kind yeah, of okay. that kind of size and when we did our survey there were a thousand responses to the survey mm -hmm. which i think is kind of unprecedented. Hey, people are excited about this green space mm -hmm. uh, you see other large uh, metropolitan cities do this green mm -hmm. space you don't see a lot of cities this small and maybe you do maybe you guys have studied other cities at thirty-eight thousand people are there other cities that well awasa and broken arrow have done something 
Um, but no one has, no place in the country has what we have. We have the Price Tower yes. and the Taliesin design a, a community center mm -hmm. within a block of each other. Yep. And it's an architectural, significant, um, unique place. Mm -hmm. And to this, this green will just add to that and right. it will showcase it. And so it just connects them. It, yes. It connects those two. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's and the we idea. saw some drawings where it comes right up into the community center. Uh, the fountain's still there, splash, pla uh, splash pads, and uh, some of the designs were incredible, what, yeah. these, what these students well, are doing. Well, you know, the, um, the direction that we're going, uh, there are certain elements that'll be there. There'll be, uh, the fountain will stay, and there'll Good. be some iteration of that. There'll be another water feature the children will be able to play in. Um, there will also be a, a performance venue, yes. and it'll be set in a direction that audience and performers will be comfortable in hopefully in, in any time of day. We're hoping to do that. To help be monthly hope we're hoping to yeah. get some performers coming yeah. in. We've already got our wheels turned. We love that. We love concert. what you guys are doing. So that'll Thank that'll you. that'll be great. Um, and uh, then there's going to be areas that will be you know, shady. There'll be open mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. There'll be um, a, a lot of natural rock mm -hmm. because we want to kind of bring in mm -hmm. the feel Love for that. what we have yes. here. Mm -hmm. And um, so on the 17th, we'll probably have something that's pretty close. I assume we'll probably have at least probably one more meeting before we make a presentation to the council. The city council has mm -hmm. to vote on it. And that should be on November 5th. Okay. And that will be the- uh, We're close. The the design. Thing. And then then construction documents, okay. yes, okay. and then moving dirt, which is always the exciting. Part. It is yes. part, and we'll be there when that dirt starts to be yes. moved. Okay. So, yeah. how what's the uh, time for the to build it? I mean, what what are they saying? If you guys started to moving dirt in February of next year, when would it be done? It, it'll be driven by uh, what the ultimate design is, mm -hmm. and of course we're under a certain budgetary restraint because sure. only so much money was uh, mm -hmm. uh, allocated. And how much budget. was that now? How much? One point seven million. Okay. One point seven five, I think. Uh, there's some additional funds uh, that had been in place, like to fix the curb and the mm -hmm. the drive area. Mm -hmm. We're going to use that in in what we're doing. Also, in conjunction with uh, this project, uh, we moved uh, two years ago. We moved the stormwater management um, uh, stormwater project forward, and so we'll start here at Sixth Street, mm -hmm. and that'll be in conjunction with that. And that's a fairly large okay. project. Good. It goes all the way, and we fix all the downtown uh, drainage problems. That way. Great. So downtown's uh, booming. It is downtown. And next year in the springtime, you'll see all the roads in downtown uh, resurfaced under the bond. Uh, you'll see the, uh, the uh, attaching uh, pathfinder to downtown area and the Great. bike path for downtown, oh, Great. Nice. which was also part of the box. Yes, yeah. uh, right. So on your, your, your answer uh, to your question about how long construction takes, it's kind of a, a function of what the final design is. Okay. Uh, depending on how long the construction documents take, mm -hmm. um, uh, I would say anywhere from three months, which is what I'm pushing for. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be as much as a year. but. I'm certainly going to push that that doesn't happen. Right. Uh, so if we could start next year, uh, I think that um, we'd have a space maybe wow. by October. Wow. So that's great. Gosh. Because I, I believe that whenever government does this kind of thing, people don't want to wait. They want to see results. Right. And that's what we're pushing for. Right. So give me some city dirt. Let me know what's going on with the city. Give me something about the city that we want to know about. Why do you say well, that? City dirt. dirt. Here we go. Yeah. Well, I don't well, know. I just want to know something that maybe not everybody knows. It's, it's coming up. It's okay. Big, um, some new something. Right. The uh, some of the things that are happening, mm -hmm. and some some folks know this, but a lot of times people don't. Of course, we have a new police chief. Yes. Uh, our longtime chief is uh, retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Tom, for your service. And, and thanks, Tom. Yeah. And uh, the new young man, a uh, younger fellow, and uh, he's coming from Anadarko. Good. Meeting with him today, here he's a very nice fellow. And Great. We'll have a conversation mm -hmm. this afternoon. Uh, some of the other things, <clears throat> there'll be um, another bond issue in 2019, okay. depending on how everything falls out. So I'm asking people to tell us what they would like to see in that issue. Great. And uh, some of the neighborhoods are talking. Um, you know, a lot of times roads, and we always focus on roads. Uh, and then I would like to see a project, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but we're developing a new industrial park off of Sunset on the west side. Yes. Just on the uh, east side of the airport. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd like to see some improvement in infrastructure in that area mm -hmm. to include um, that new industrial district to bring in more primary jobs. Uh, in conjunction with that, what I'd like to also see, uh, 
there's a growing group of folks who like to ride bikes in town. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Fat Tire would like to uh, yep. be involved in uh, um, these kind of mountain bike uh, races, mm -hmm. which I never knew about mountain bike races, but I do now. Put and, these uh, trails together. These yes, trails. yes. And we'd like to see uh, a way to connect downtown with uh, Hudson Lake. Yes. So that we could have those kind of things come here. And also, again, would be an economic mm -hmm. benefit, not only from the standpoint of people coming into town, but uh, younger people wanting to live here because you know, that's kind of the future for us. Yeah. And what you guys are doing, I mean, with this magazine, what other town of the size has them? Was well, that kind of quality magazine? Well, thank you. We, we love what we do and we love to support Bartlesville and talk about it. And uh, we just don't have enough pages to talk about stuff. And that's why we want to have people like you. I think people want to know what's going on in the city. Sure. And uh, where our tax dollars are going and, and what they're being spent on. So. I like what you guys are doing, and we really appreciate you for coming by and talking to us. And Glad to do it. Nice to see Thank you, you again. Thank you, no, Keith. So, I want to introduce three guys in the bill. Uh, we got Clint, Casey, and Matt. We appreciate you guys being here today. Clint, Casey, Matt. Yes. I got a little pointer here. Yes. So, Jeez. these are the three guys in the bill, and if you haven't listened to their podcast, it is funny as... I can't say no, the word. No, it's funny. It's, it's funny. funny. It's so funny. We, we know if you haven't listened. <laughs> that's weird because that's not what we were going for. We we're going you for a very serious yeah. talk. We thought yeah. you were funny. Yeah. 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 We want to yeah. like, like heart issues. Now, how many, show, so now, how many shows have you guys done? Now, who started it? What, tell me how it all started. What? Casey, go ahead. No, well, I approached both of these guys separately thinking that it was something we would never do. <laughs> Yeah. Casey and I would get together at church and be like, what is with people at the grocery store just camping out in the aisles? And then we were just like, this would be a great idea to just, people need to hear this. And Clint, we did a bunch of events together and he would steal the show and I would just be in the background like, hey, I'm here too. <laughs> uh, that will happen here now too. But Clint is like, uh, he's, our, everybody he's, our, knows Clint. he's our foundation and everybody knows him. He's the reason that people listen because he gives us the notoriety we need. That's really not true. Up. As I said, like oh, in the magazine up. article, it's like <laughs> you guys are the only ones worthy of an audience. I just keep the show moving along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, they are in this month's issue. They are. Obviously, yeah, they are in this here. month's issue. That's really why good. they're here. Hey, you guys have a magazine? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. do have a magazine here. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's called B Monthly. Mm. Yeah, cool. we, you know, about twelve thousand of them every month. So we'll, we'll give you one. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll give you one. Yeah. Actually, this one. Every one month. free one. Okay. Yeah, one free Actually, one. Every month. I have a way of derailing our show too. So, <laughs> yeah. so we've been on. Who else? <laughs> it's just him constantly talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's or just we don't show up. Yeah. 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 When we were on the show, that's all we did was laugh. Um, so you guys had like a first question. What was the first question? No, what would be your song if you came out? On yeah. the song. Oh, you guys song. I don't, mine has probably changed since. What are you? What is your guys? There, you know, um, "Dip Your Wings" by Peter Cetera is uh, <laughs> playing a car a lot. Is lately. that even a real song? <laughs> How dare you, dare you not know that? I've never even heard that person. You don't want to. I've never heard of Peter Is that a, Peter, is that a 70s? Peter Cetera, like Glory of Love from Karate Kid? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Karate Kid. You have to yeah. use, I know 80s movies. Right. Right. <laughs> I wasn't born. But, uh, <laughs> and so what's yours right now? I think I think I said on the podcast it was still Eminem, so oh. I'm pretty hardcore. I'm going to stay with the rap. You're going to stay with the rap? Yeah. Lose yourself? That probably yeah, okay. so, yeah. I think anything by Pitbull would be a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I can do this. I mean, I, I really, I'll really, i change my like, Club Can't Handle Me Now by Flo Rida is really kind of one of my favorites. Club Can't Handle That's Me so Now. That's so right yeah. up your alley. Oh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> when you yeah. walk out of the bank, is that what plays? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. When I walk in in the morning, I have to queue it up. <laughs> like, sometime like, sometime around 10.30. Hit it. Hit it. So, his voice say Flo And I think it, you guys told me that you guys have a listener in Virginia or West Virginia. It's or actually Connecticut. Connecticut. It's Connecticut. Two. So you guys yeah. have two listeners in Connecticut. Yeah. Wow. Why? Why? So you're pretty much across the United States. And it may be like a spam, kind of a bot thing that <laughs> automatically clicks them in. I don't know if they're listening. <laughs> I thought they were listening to some cooking show as two old women. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cooking show, Margaret. Not what I thought. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I think Zach, who's not here with us today, he's our sound guy. Yeah. And he's the reason I think these guys would agree that we're successful, Zach Hendricks. Um, he helped us connect everything so we're, we're out everywhere we mm -hmm. can possibly be. And then he sends us like, hey, these are your average listeners in each county or state. Nice. 
And you know, we bypassed Bartlesville because we knew we would like possibly get a big chunk of Bartlesville. Mm -hmm. We went right to Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 40 listeners in Dallas were like, but we have two in Connecticut. But with that, that takes us from like a local to a national podcast. national podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. National podcast. We're going to take over Canada next. Right. Well, and so, then go international. Yeah. That's right. Wow. That's so cool. Okay, Still so seven listeners, but <laughs> they're spread out very well. You know, I think the key for you guys is you got to do it every month. When's the next one? When's the next show? That's a great question. <laughs> Casey, we got, yeah. is, 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 are if we going to be? Just, if you just stop right now and and we leave, yeah. you guys could just. You could start right. If you guys leave right now, these two will end up fighting. <laughs> no, if, if you guys leave right now and we're like, all right, Clint, let's do a podcast, he'll be like, shit, awesome, I'm, I'm in. And then like five minutes before the podcast, he'll be like, one of my 17 kids has their fourth dance recital that I have to be at, so I'm going to have to go. That's You're usually, a good dad. That's usually right. how it goes. Right. Yeah. He's a great dad. I, Clint is one of the busiest individuals I ever. Know. I'm like, hey, Clay, you want to grab a coffee? He, at like one in the afternoon, he's like, no, I'm actually hosting an event right now. <laughs> <laughs> or he's the voice of the Bruins, which not a lot of people know, but. Right. Voice you of the are Bruins. That, you have that voice. You do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. Will you say Flo Rida tonight at the game? Flo Rida. I will try. Flo I'll try. Try to sneak yeah. that in there. Yeah. So, I spoke Matt's name in one time during dude, the game. can we tell that story? Yeah. yeah. We have time? Yes. Okay, so I'm sitting in the stands, and I know Clint's up in the in the box. He's the voice of the Bruins. And so I texted him. I said, Clint, you have to say something that only we would get. And I can't remember if we were playing. We weren't playing a, like. We were getting hammered. We were getting hammered. hammered. <laughs> so basically nobody's paying attention, and we're just hanging out, you know, having a good time supporting whatever's left to support. And <laughs> The kids. <laughs> the kids, yeah. The children. Um, <laughs> And then, all of a sudden, we're on offense. Yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on offense. We're on so. offense. The team that we're playing makes a tackle, and I hear over the stand or over the intercom, tackle made by Matt Clark. <laughs> no. And I immediately stood up, and I was like, yes. And I look up in the box, and Clint is doing. He's just pointing at me. He's like, <laughs> made my yeah. night. I was like, oh, I was like, stupid. I'm like, he's never gonna get this. He'll never notice it, but. And I don't think you noticed like right away. You may have, but I noticed his wife, Laura, is like. <laughs> See, I never heard that in high school, so it was quite a moment for right, me. Yeah. That's Over the speak to well, yeah. Heck yeah. Wow. Heck yeah. Um, so the next show is. You, he you know, called we, your name. Did you call his name? Because you did the punt. Well, he did the punt passing kick yeah, last week. Um, you you would give better than a lot of people. I mean, you're no, way better than average. I will give you that. Yeah, I, I shanked the punt, so as soon as I punted the ball, I was like, no, there's no, no way. I don't have 49 People can't football. punt in penny loafers, so that's right. That's a drawback. Right. Can't that's do that. Can we do a show tomorrow night? I'm, oh, know, here we go. Here we go. You yeah. gonna get it on camera? Right. This is what do a show. Right. This is what happens. <laughs> Matt's like, we're gonna do a show, and it's gonna be great. We're gonna have all these people, and Clint's like, yeah, I'll be there. And then Saturday night rolls around, and nothing. We're gonna book ourselves for January. Okay. So we'll come yeah. on your show in January. That'll be Actually, fun. I'm, I'm, I'm out for January, guys. Wow. <laughs> right. well, so so this is two guys in the deal. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's end this with a hey. So you you serve our United States. We appreciate you. Thank you. All you do for us, and I think that's uh, uh, I think you're you're a hero to us here in Bartlesville. So we appreciate what you do. So appreciate are that. you going anywhere soon? That Not you anytime talk about? soon. Yeah. Okay, nope. Good. So I'm back to the the reserve status. So it's just nice. the. The monthly obligations in the two weeks out of the summer. Now you went over how many times? I've been over twice. I was twice. in Iraq in 2004 and in Afghan Afghanistan last year. Good, good. Well, we appreciate it. For that. what it's worth, um, Matt helped some kids across the street in elementary school last week. Wow, I did. Good job. Wow. I did. Okay, this is where they. Too. This is typically where they insert their CrossFit plug. Right. <laughs> right. I was gonna say. Uh, military has to be balanced by. I was gonna say that. <laughs> you did it yourself. Uh, by it's on you. Hey, you got a new gig. All kind, of, all you guys. Yeah. You started with the RVS, and then you started with uh, City Church. Are you at City Church, man? Yes, sir. I'm the youth pastor at City Church. Nice. Now, so well, it's for them. literally my dream job besides podcasting. Right. Right. This one actually pays. So <laughs> it's actually pays. Right. Well, hey, listen, guys. Get 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 the magazine out. They're out today, and then they'll be out all um, all of them tomorrow. So 140 drop sites. Uh, it's a great issue. We appreciate you three guys in the bill for coming out, sharing your story. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, thanks for having me. So, the other day, uh, I was on Facebook and I saw uh, me and Aaron go way back. We uh, 
work out the same gym. Uh, are you still coming? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? I'm, I'm eating. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, and also, you're with the New Kings Band. Yes. And we've been yeah. dying to get you guys up here to yeah. sing for us, so yeah. at least I got part of you up here. But you wrote this song for a remembrance song off of Chafouts. Yes. And uh, it touched my heart because obviously this month is the month coming up that we lost Tyler, and when I heard that song, I cried like a baby, but uh, um, I think the acoustics in here are awesome, and I think when you, when people hear this song, they're going to be uh, moved like I was, and so uh, I appreciate I so. you yeah. liking that, and uh, appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you bet, brother. All right, take it away. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Hey guys, hey, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you guys every month that we come to you guys. Okay, these guys are going to be out today and all out tomorrow, so go get your copy before they're all gone. God bless you guys and have a great day.